Hey everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and a continuing series, Emulation Night School, where I show you how to set up some of the most popular emulators out there, all the files you need, the games you're going to want to play, all the visual settings, and everything else you need control-wise to be able to play some of these games on your PC. And if you can't tell already, today we're doing Xbox, the original Xbox in fact, on XMU or ZMU. Not sure how to pronounce it, so if you have any ideas, tell me down below. But the original Xbox was such an awesome console and it marked Microsoft's entry into the home console wars and we still have Xbox consoles today. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor down below, hit like and subscribe and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. I do have a new $10 tier to help you along with this if you get stuck, but if you watch the video and click this download for Windows button, you should be fine. Now once we have the emulator downloaded, you want to go over to compatibility, because if there's a particular game or set of games you want to play and they are not currently compatible, this entire thing will be for naught. XMU is not a finished product yet. It's an extremely impressive emulator, but it is still in active development, so you should always check to make sure the game that you're trying to play works on the compatibility tracker before you spend all the time setting this up or dumping your own original disc, because you do need to do that. You'll see here, if I take a look at the original Halo, it's going to have a few notes on known issues that have not been resolved yet and that is because it is still in active development but none of these issues are going to cause the game to be unplayable so we know we're good or something like blinks the time sweeper here there's only one known issue so that would be infinitely playable now if we pop over to the FAQs, the number one thing you need to know is the files you're going to have to have within XMU to be able to actually to get it to play games. When you download it, it is not in that state yet. You're going to need the XCMP boot ROM image, you're going to need the flash ROM image, and you're going to need a blank hard disk image formatted for the Xbox. Now you should be getting these by dumping them from your own original Xbox hardware, which is what I've done here. The first file is the MCPX boot image, and there's going to be checksum hashes here don't worry about that unless your files aren't working they're just to check against the second image is going to be the flash rom image you're going to need that and the complex 4627 file is going to be the one you're going to want to use within the emulator that has the best compatibility across the board and i will show you how to enter that into the emulator system later on and you will see that there is a ready to go hard disk image it is blank and formatted for the emulator if you click download pre-formatted xbox hard disk image you're going to get the one of the three files here from the xmu website the other two or up to you. Now when we have this zip file that we downloaded, it does not install, you just unpack it. So pick wherever you want XMU to live on your PC, go ahead and use whatever unzip files you want and extract it to the folder in which you'd like it to live in. Just don't move it around too much, it can get a little confusing if you start transferring files. Now that we have that unzipped, we can delete the zip file and we have XMU right here. These are the files that I'm going to bring over. We have all three that I just previously mentioned. You'll see the complex underscore 4627.bin. There's a version 1.03 that you could also use, but I find the first one to be the most compatible. That is the one of the three files we're gonna need to put into XMU to get it to launch games. Be aware that without all three of these files, it's not going to work. On the boot ROM image, you're going to see mcpx underscore 1.0.bin. That is what we're going to need there as well. And if we back up into the folder structure, we'll go over the hard drive as well. That is essential. It's going to keep the system running much better. You do want to bring that in, but that's the file extension right there. Give you a little closer look at it so you see it. You'll see pre-built Xbox hard disk drive image. It's going to be in there as well. And we just got that from the XMU website. These are the three files that we need to start running games, but we need to actually get them ingested into XMU. So go ahead and launch it for the first time. You're going to get error message that it failed to open the files. I've unconfigured mine to be able to reset this up. Yours may look slightly different, but nothing is going to work off the start. You're just going to see guest does not initialize the display yet. We now need to go into the settings menu. If you go to the top left hand corner in settings, you're going to see here under system, we have the three files we need. So go ahead and click onto each one and navigate to where you have the files for the emulator that you got from your system. That is where you're gonna locate them. For the boot ROM image, we'll just go in here and select that. We know we're good to go. For flash ROM and hard drive, we're gonna do the exact same thing down the line, allocating the correct files that I just showed you into the correct spaces. 
Once you've done all that, the emulator is going to say you need to restart it. Go ahead and do that. And if you see this splash screen right here and it goes to please insert an Xbox disc, you know you have done it correctly. But if you go back to settings, let's talk about some of the base settings before we get into an actual game. By default, it's going to configure itself to 64 megabytes of ROM and you want to leave that there unless you're trying to run any developer games or other arcade hardware that's going to need double RAM. The AV pack is going to be HDTV. We'll leave it demarcated as this so you can get the highest resolution out of it. You can play around with a lot of other things, but I recommend you leave them both as default. Now, if we move around a little bit more to general, it's obviously going to check for updates, and I highly recommend that. Everything else is going to be set by default. If you don't want the startup animation, you can turn that off, but honestly, I like seeing it's like two seconds, so let's leave that on. But an emulator is not good if you don't have a controller. I'm using an Xbox Series X controller here, and the minute you plug it in, it's going to automatically be detected by XMU, and it's going to automatically bind the keys. You could use a keyboard if you wanted to, you could probably set a mouse up if you wanted to, but pretty much any mainstream controller that works on Windows 10 will be automatically detected by XMU, and it will automatically bind the buttons. You can put memory units in, but since we have that virtual hard drive, we can just save directly to that. Auto bind is always on unless you want to change the bindings and you can switch the background controller input capture in case the window is not focused. But just move around your controller, push some buttons, you're going to see that they're instantaneously registered on the XMU controller mapping here. So you'll know that everything is working. If for any reason you want to use something like a PlayStation 5 controller, you might need to do a little bit more. I highly recommend using the Xbox formatted controller here because it is an Xbox. Now over on display, this is going to be one of the biggest toggles right here, the internal rendering resolution scale. You can run it at 1x, 2x, 4x, 10x, whatever x you want to. Just be aware you need to have the hardware. What that does is automatically upscale the image in the internal renderer. You can go full screen, you can do full screen on startup, you can select your window size, any of those visual configurations you want to go for. But I will go into the resolution scaling and how that affects performance in just a moment. And I leave vertical refresh sync or vsync on just so I know that I'm not going to get any screen tearing. Otherwise, all of the interface options, don't really need to worry about any of them. You can read them at your heart's leisure. Under audio, you're going to see that there's a real-time DSP processing toggle. That is experimental, and I leave that off. I get much better success with it. Under networking, if you wanted to start and try to set up Xbox Live services, that would be a different video because it is relatively complicated. Leave me a note down below and tell me if you want to see that. So you can basically ignore the entire network tab. Snapshot is just going to be screenshots, things such as that. And under system, we already went through that with the RAM. Now on about you're going to see my system specs, an i9-12900K with an NVIDIA 3080 Ti. Keep that in mind when I start going over the rendering resolution scaling so you know whether or not you want to scale as hard as I did. And those two files, the hash information here, in case you want to check to make sure yours are good, is below. So you can check that checksum to make sure your file is correct. Now on the game front, we need to have X-ISO images. These should be dumped from your original disk, but just be aware that they need to be X-ISO formatted or else the emulator is not going to read them whatsoever. I just create a games folder and when I'm done unzipping it, I delete the zip file if I have one. That way I'm not using extra storage. Drag that file over into the games folder just for neat and convenient storage. You're going to see it is an X-ISO file, so I am good to go. You don't need to put all your games in a games folder, but when you try to load a disk within XMU, it's going to make things 10 times easier, so I can't recommend enough you do that. So launch back into XMU, and if we go up the top left corner, go ahead and hit load disk. You can't see the browser come up here because it is focused underneath the window, but select that ISO file you want to load, and then you're going to go ahead to machine and hit reset. If you've done everything correctly at this point in time, you're going to see a splash screen come up, and whatever game it is you were trying to play from your original collection will start executing within the emulator, and we can start playing a game. That's all it takes to get into the game, but there are some other visuals settings I want to go over. But the great part about XMU is just how compatible it is and just how good the performance is off the top. Once you get the game running, you can basically treat it like an original Xbox, and outside of a few visual glitches here and there in games, it's going to be an extremely competent and great emulator for you. But again, remember this is not finished code, the emulator is not done, so you're definitely going to have some hitching here and there. And that is down to the shader caching. The first time you play a game, when it sees a new shader, it needs to compile it and transpose it into a format that the emulator can understand. So if you do notice hitching here or there in the first like 5-10 minutes of a game, do be aware that that is common, it just is caching the shaders. 
when we actually get into Halo proper, it is running really well. You might see a visual glitch here or there, but for the most part, this is an infinitely playable experience. Now, by default, I do leave the emulator set to 4x internal rendering resolution, and that means the internal resolution the game renders at is four times that of a standard definition signal that you would get out of your original Xbox if you're playing it with real hardware. Now, changing the internal rendering resolution is going to be where the visual enhancements really come in, but you'll see there a shader did have to cache momentarily, so there was a hitch when that door blew up. But otherwise, this is running at a rock solid frame rate, but we can make it run even faster, or we can absolutely absolutely make this game chug in ways that it never would on original hardware and that's just down to the complexity of the game, the power of your hardware, and what's going on screen at any moment in time. Now at 4x this looks really great and if we go into this room here you can see all of these smoke effects and particle effects look amazing. And if we take a look at this door here the fire and everything is good. If we go down to settings and we go to display we can dial this up or dial it down so let's go to a 1x scale or Xbox native. This is what the resolution would look like if you were playing on real hardware. If you want that OG Xbox look, pun very much intended, go ahead and pop it to 1x and it's going to look like a clear HDMI signal coming out of the back of your original Xbox. But let's try something like moving it to 8x resolution scale. I want you to understand just what this affects. If I go from 1x to 8x, you're going to see the screen instantaneously get much clearer in the background. When I click off, this texture here for this little panel is absolutely crystal clear. Now I wish I could play the entire game at 4x, but the minute you come in here and encounter those particle effects, this is not enough power to run the game at native frame rate. And remember, I'm using an i9-12900K and it does have an overclock on it with a 3080 Ti and 64 gigabytes of memory. So I have a lot of extra horsepower, but it still cannot keep up. For most modern systems with a decent GPU, I recommend that 4x. You see when I come out and the particle effect is gone, it speeds back up. 4x seems to be the sweet spot after that depending on how complex an effect is it can slow your game down because as we move back to 4x here and go back into that particle effect it runs absolutely no issues whatsoever so if you are seeing slow down dial down the rendering resolution because at 4x i'm getting an absolutely stable image awesome controls no screen tearing whatsoever this is an amazing way to play halo 2. now there are other ways that you can change that same setting and i'll show you in just a moment but watch the screen cadence, watch the lack of tearing, watch the particle effects, everything going on on screen at once. If you notice any hitching, that's the first time the emulator has seen that particular shader and it has to cache in the background. The first 15 minutes are going to be a little bit stilted, but after that you should be totally fine because for the most part the emulator is going to see all the different shaders that the game has to offer within like the first 15 to 20 minutes. But just don't be surprised if it happens if you haven't used an emulator like this. Some people do find it a little bit jarring. Now if you go into the view menu, you do have some quick auto toggle options, including the internal render resolution scale as well as 16x9. Now I leave all my games native 4x3, and if I do a secondary video on this for stuff like Xbox Live, if you want to see some widescreen, let me know. But if you follow all of the steps in this tutorial, go through all of the different options and menus, get all the files in the right spot, you're going to be playing original Xbox games on your Windows PC, and they're going to be so much better than original hardware when they run well. Something like Jet Set Radio Video future here with the cell shaded graphics running at 4x internal rendering resolution just look incredible on my screen but if you run into any issues leave me a comment down below and i do have that patreon link so if you need personal help i'm happy to help you guys short of that go play some xbox and i'll see you next time bye bye